Um, We started a course by looking at introduction to MATLAB, uh, introduction to computing generally. Then we moved to MATLAB basics. Where in MATLAB, we talked we talked about arrays, the two types of arrays, numeric and the uh, character. We looked at data types. We talked about uh, arrays, inputs, and outputs. And then we also went ahead to look at plotting, how to plot a chart. So basically, uh, like I've been saying, the chapter two covers a lot of things that um, we might take for granted. Um, now, we went further to look at branching statements as a true or false statement and loops. And then our last meeting, we talked about uh, user-defined functions. Okay. So um, let's look at an example on the user-defined function. Uh, we did some last week. Okay. Uh, mainly based on what we saw in exams. But let's look at some example and then um, we can take it up from there. All right. So um anytime we want to start a project or so going into these exams, one of the problems I've seen is that students end up doing the work and not saving it in the appropriate folder or sometimes not even know where to save the work. Okay, so I use this opportunity to go through that aspect again. And because when your document comes to me after exams and I don't see any file in it, it's zero, which means you failed. Okay, so we need to do the right thing. And to do that, I'll take you through the steps for the last time. I know anytime we meet and we have practical session, I talk about it. Okay, but this time around, uh, but for with this um I'll expect you to pay attention and something that you should do in the exams. All right, so we start with you need to create a folder on desktop. Create a folder. Okay. So like I keep saying, uh, the folder should have your course name. Usually I give those instructions on the question paper. So, the moment. All right, so create a folder on desktop. So as you can see here, I've created a folder. Okay, CVE, which 
my uh, your ID number on desktop. Then inside that folder, create two folders, one AutoCAD and one MATLAB. Let me delete this. One AutoCAD and the other MATLAB inside a folder with your name and ID. Now, after this, go into your um, MATLAB and then locate this folder, the open folder with the arrow pointing down. Click on it, go to your desktop, locate the code, the folder you created, and then open the one with MATLAB. Now hit the select folder button for you to select that folder. Now, once you've done that, you should have an empty folder, an empty space, so that whatever work you do will be saved in there. Now, the first thing we want to do, or from last week, we talked about user-defined functions, how to create a function and all that. Okay, so I'll take one example, and then we'll see how best we can um, work with something like that. And so uh, let's say you want to calculate the area of a square, okay, the area of a square, or write a function to calculate the area of a square. The question will prompt you to use the MATLAB script okay, or the M file. So when I click on uh, when you go to the home tab, there's what new script file, the home tab. There's a new script file. You click on it and then it opens the editor for you. Okay. Now, like we always do, you start with, you start by commenting your name and your ID. The name your ID, and then finally, you comment what the program is about. So a function to calculate the area of a square. Okay. Now I said anytime you start your function, you start with a keyword function. Now that will be preceded. That will be followed by your um output argument. So in this case, I want to calculate the area of a square. So the output is the area. So we put the area and then equal to, now we add the function name and the function name we can say square, square area as the function name. Then we give our output, sorry, our input argument. Now to find the area of a square, what do we do, anyone? What do we need as input? So please L squared. What do we need as input? I'm not saying the formula. I'm talking about what will be the input. Anyone? We have to input the length. The length. So the length is the input. So you can say length or sorry, the length, or you can say the um. 
someone can decide to use uh, L, okay, so the L for the length. Now, the square has, a square would only take one um, input argument. Okay, to take only one input argument. There are other questions, like I said, other formulas that will require more than one input argument. And like I keep saying, try as much as possible to compare with the full timers A and B, what question they had in their session B. Okay, so that you try them out. Because what you had in your session B, we did that in class, the trapezoid example last two weeks. So you start your function and then you always end the function. Okay. Now the next thing is to write the formula for the area. So area is equal to length times length or length square okay, or length carat, sorry. Length carat two. Okay. That's the area. Now, when we finish, we display our area. So display into bracket area, okay. or this into bracket area. Now, once we've done this, we've written the formula or the function to calculate the length of the square. So any square whatsoever, once you specify the length, it will give you the area. Okay. So after this, we save our work, go to save us. And like I said, because it's a function and we have selected the folder we are working with in, automatically MATLAB gives you the function name as the file name. So you don't need to change it. Don't change it to your name. Don't change it to anything else. Once you've written the correct function name, MATLAB will automatically use that function name as your file name. Okay. So you save it. And then after saving it, the next thing you want to do is to call the function. Now we do the function call inside the command prompt. What do we mean by calling the function? You specify the function name, okay, and the input argument you should take. So if the input argument, the length of the square is four. So you put the function name there into bracket four. That is what we call calling the function, okay? So to call the function and say that um, square area, that's the function name. So you can copy and paste and edit it. Square area into bracket. Now you can see the text showing. Let me just zoom much further. So it's showing length a, a square area into bracket length. So it's prompting you to enter the actual value for the length. So if I enter four, close my bracket, and I press enter, it gives me what? The length, the area as 16, based on the formula we've written here. Area is equal to length times length. Okay, and then displays the result. So take note of this. Um, like I said, you have one question that will require you to do this. You've saved the work already. Okay. So take note of the formulas. Like I said, the formulas will come in different ways. You looked at operator precedence and associativity. So if the formula shows a different style, you should know how to write it. Usually most of the math goes into how you write the formula. Okay, in your code. So pay attention to it. We've done numerous examples and learn from. Okay. So that's the first part. Now the second part, the question, um, which is something we've done it before. However, we did it in a different uh, context. Okay, we did it in a different context. 
So for instance, you've been given, let's say, um, maybe, um, let me move into the black, the white board. So you've been given something like a box. A box contains or consists of, let's say, five materials or items. Okay. Now, the weight of these items have been given. And for instance, one weight is, let's say, 90. Another weight is, say, 75. Another weight is 40. Another weight is 89. And let's say another eight is uh, 62. Okay. Now, you've been asked to draw a bar chart. Okay, we've done plots. You've been asked to maybe draw a bar chart or uh, using the script chart file, write a program and draw a bar chart for this. Uh, data okay, for this data. All right. Now, how do you go about such a question? Okay. First, we can assume that the box here is X. So if the box is X and the box contains five items, this should be equal to square bracket one to five. Okay, and that will give us values of what? One, two, three, four, and then five. Okay, then we can say the weight of the items of, of the respective items is y so 1 is x 2 is 75 40 is 3 item 3 item 4 is 89 and item 5 is 62 please are you all following me yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. now give it yes. yes sir yes sir um, yes sir a plot Okay, or a bar chart. I'm supposed to come up with a bar chart. And we know how bar chart looks like. You plot your x axis against your y. Okay. So we need to write this also in a form of a uh, MATLAB okay, using the square bracket the values in that order. And then we come up with a chart. So how do we go about that? Let's move back into our um, so let's move back into our math lab. Now it says create a new script file. So you can click on new to give you a new script file. You can click on the add button here. Repeat the same thing, the comments. I'll just copy this, then paste. This time around, we want to uh, draw a bar chart. Now, in drawing the bar chart, this time it's not a function, so you don't need to do anything function. 
Okay. So if it's drawing a bar chart, the bar chart is uh we've seen the value of x. So we say x is equal to um square bracket one to five. So because this is a script file, okay, when you run it, uh you need to save it. So maybe this time we have to give it a name ourselves, unlike when it's a function. Okay, so this time we can say uh question two. Okay. Question two. So I save it. Now, when I run it, it gives me what? The answer as what? For x, okay? Then y, what is my y? Y are my weight, okay? And what is the weight? The first one is, let's say, 90, then 75, then uh, what's the next one? I think 62. Then 40, 40 80, and then 89. 80. Okay. So this is my X. When I run it again, it gives me my values for X and Y. Okay. Then now we need to come up with a plot. Plot our X against our Y. Now, to do that, we say bar. So these are the plots. If you go here, you see the various plots, bar. Okay, so now I want to do the bar. Now, if you come down, it shows you bar x, y, how you can plot it, bar x, y, and so on. Okay, you can add style, you can add color, and so on to it. So, bar into bracket, we put the x, and then we put our y there. Then we come up with a plot. So when I go to editor and I run again, it should be plotting my chart for me. Just a moment. This is the chart. Okay. Now, after doing this, that's not the end. You have to add the title, the legend. Uh, the the x and y axis label. Okay, so like we always do, go to insert. So x as it, what is it? Maybe x as it is the items or the materials. Okay, and then what is the y axis? The y axis we have the the weight. Sorry, the weight of materials or items. So we have this. So the first bar, the X is one, Y is 90. The second item is Y is 75, fifth one is 62, and all the way here. So what do we do next? We need to give it a chat title okay so maybe instead title you can say the title is um okay let me just skip this and then you can add a legend i'll show you something i'll show you okay however this one when we add a legend it doesn't really uh, it makes sense because it's just one table for all. There are times you can have two plots. Maybe you are plotting X against Y. And you are also, you have two bar charts. So X against Y and then maybe X against, um, say Z. Where Z can be, Y is the weight. You can say Z is maybe the, um, let's say the height or something. 
okay, let's say the height or something. So you can have the two plots. Now, after your plot, you can also do uh, put a comma and then do what we call the label. So you can do the labels and the title from here. So I can say title into brackets. What title do I want to give? It's a string. So I'll put it in a double, a single quote. So the title, let's say, wait, uh, bar chart. bar chart on the of five materials. Okay. I run this again. It should show inside my bar chart. So you can see it here. It's showing in the bar, uh, the bar chart on top. Okay, so like I said, you can add it here and you can also write it in the code. We yeah, can ask the X axis. So the X axis, we call it the X label. X label in right. Um, you give it a label. So To be given in the X the materials. Okay, then we repeat for the Y. Just copy and it change to Y. And then say my Y label is the weight. So I run it again. And now I have all those various parts saved. Okay. Now you can see the X values and the Y values showing inside the workspace. So all you have to do is we've saved the MATLAB, the script file already as question 2.m. So you save the workspace as well. So go to the figure. Sorry, you save the plot. Okay, the batch has go to figure, go to save us. Sorry, go to file, go to save us, and same name, question two. Two, so this will save us dot fig. So you should see it show here. And then finally, we save the workspace too. So the workspace to we save it as question two. And then you have it here as dot mat. Okay. So that would be it. That's it for the um, second part. So you can have a plot or a bar chart or a question in a form. Um, the X will not be straightforward. You have to think through it. <clears throat> and then specify the value of X. Then why you know that you get your Y and plot the two. There are times it could be three plots you come up with. Any question before we look at the AutoCAD part? Any question? All right, so um, if there's no question, I'll move quickly to the AutoCAD. Um, I shared some videos with you on the AutoCAD beginning of the year. Okay, so uh, the video on some uh, images, okay, to learn how to draw them. 
you might not get exactly the same thing in exams, but maybe something which is much simpler. Okay. So this is one of them. Um, there's also another one. Okay. But with the exams, I doubt if you're getting something regarding circles. Okay. We also be focused on more of drawing squares okay, and triangles based on the shape you've been given. So I think this one, this example should be able to work better for you when you are practicing. Okay. Sir, so, yes. Please, can you expand the screen for us, please? I seen the AutoCAD screen. It, it, it looks more on our phone. And it's a video I've already shared with you. I've shared with uh, oh. the class already since the beginning of the year. So, oh, okay. Uh, so just get it. So I'm talking about this particular one. Okay, which has to do with the rectangles and the triangles and the lines. So there will be a shape given to you which will require you to do that. Okay, not exactly, not exactly this one, but something similar and much simple than this. Okay, so watch the videos and practice it. However, there is wanted to take you through the introduction, but I have an issue with the application on my laptop. So what I decided to do is to share some links. Uh, I don't know if and as you've seen the links on the class ref speech. Okay, but I'll equally share it in the chat right now so that you can all um, have them copied down. Okay, so these are videos which talks about uh, three videos which talks about the introduction to the interface, the AutoCAD interface. Okay, so I've shared the first one the second link and then the third link there are three videos they are not any big videos uh, not more than 10 minutes explaining some of the interfaces and how to draw your shapes now explain the dimension in which you are working with okay there are times people's dimension become very big and they want to minimize it and they can and eventually they say the machine is not working. Okay, so these videos or this link that I've sent you explain all those things. So you pay attention to them and try them on your own. Okay. All right. So any question? Any question? However, I'll also save this video and make it available hopefully by tomorrow or the weekend so that you can revise accordingly. Sir, sir. Yeah. Yes. Please, um, yeah, you were saying those of us who were not able to write the quiz one, quiz two, you organize the day for us. Um, let's look at next week, next week, Tuesday. All right, sir. Yeah, if anything, I'll inform the class rep right. so that you come. But with a Tuesday, the time will be four o'clock if I have to organize something between three and four o'clock. Okay, between three and four o'clock. Because five o'clock, I'll be having a class. So that is for you to make that sacrifice. If you come after five o'clock, I'll not have time for you. So it will be between the hours of three and four. At three between three and five p.m. Is all that's clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, Winfred. Okay. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Uh, please, I wanted to know if it's possible we get our handouts before exam so that maybe we can go through what maybe some of the functions uh, oh, it's, or do we do. It's it's already available. I've spoken to your rep. To speak to oh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. See how best you guys can get it. 
even before this weekend. Yeah. It's like you scan all the marking, recorded all the maps. So even if you pick it, cross check from the TA whether your maps has been entered. And also, there are people who did it on paper, especially those who did quiz one and quiz two on paper. Cross check. Uh, the papers are all available, so you can check. As for quiz three, like I said, I didn't pay much attention. Uh, I'm sure he has recorded the ones on the paper day. But for quiz one and quiz two, most people didn't have the papers. They didn't have the handout before the quiz one and quiz two. So cross check to see whether your marks, whether when you did it, whether your marks has been entered and the papers are there so you can request to see your paper. All right. Yes, Maxwell. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir, please. I want to say something about the AutoCAD because um, I don't, I don't have much idea about it. So I want to ask if you give us the, the right place or the sectors where the exams will come from so that we'll be okay with it because... Oh, that's what I've just done. I don't really use that app before. That's what I've just done. I've shared with you videos to explain the interface of the app, the tools. Okay. And these are videos that I've been using with the class for. This I've shared links. So there are two things. Beginning of the year, I shared three videos. Okay. okay. And I'm saying that one of the video, which is the one with the rectangle, which I just showed right now. Okay. It will be similar to the application or the figure you'll be required to draw. The other two videos has to do with circles. So when it's a circle, you have to do it with the radius. Okay, but what you have in the exams has nothing to do with circles. These are square, rectangles, and triangles. Okay, so the video on the, uh, the rectangle and all that will handle that part. Then as for so someone like you who doesn't who is new to AutoCAD, I've shared a link of three videos which explain one of there's the first one is explaining it's in three parts, part one, two, and three. So part one explains the interface, all the various uh, tools the interface has. Part two and three handle some example, which is no different from what you'll be seeing in the exams. The exams, you'll be given the object as a 3D. Okay, by you'll be required to draw the, the uh, 2D, the two-dimensional version of the object, not the 2D version. So you draw it from one plane and then another plane. And the sizes, the dimensions have all been given. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, any other question? Any other? Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, please, where can we find the TA? Your class rep has his contact, so. Okay, sir. And speak to NS and then he'll show you the place. I'll give you his contact or so try as much as possible. I don't know if NS was able to meet him today. If not, uh, tomorrow or even Saturday. He has lectures on Saturday He's doing his top up. So if not Saturday, you can equally give him a call if you guys are on campus. Then you pick it up. Okay, so I will, I will today I couldn't meet him, so tomorrow go really I will I will do that, sir. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, so I wish you all the best. The 